I did something really, really bad. I did something that I was not supposed to do. I bought another plant. That's right. And it's here. I wanted this plant for such a long time. It was at a really great price. And I just swiped my little credit card. I can't wait to dig in to the box and see what we got. In the first part of this video, we will be obviously unboxing this plant, but in the second part, I will also be repotting and putting it on a moss pole. And I know, I know, I know the general rule of thumb is to not repot plants the moment they arrive to your house. You should really let them acclimate to your space, let them get used to your conditions. However, I'm gonna be breaking that rule because this is a climbing plant and I want this plant to attach to the moss pole as soon as possible. And also I note that this is a pretty hardy plant and I'm not worried about it at all. So yes, I'm breaking that rule, but listen, sometimes it's fine to break rules and sometimes it's fun to break rules. Without further ado, let's jump into the box. Like I said, this plant has been on my wish list for quite some time but they were always very, very pricey. But as of late, the price has definitely come down. So I am very, very happy about that. Oh God, also I ordered this from like a local nursery shop. So yeah, let's go ahead and dive right in. Gonna just put those paper over there. And ooh, packaging material. Ooh, okay, here she is. She is all wrapped up in this cute little paper cone. So let's go ahead and put the box aside and let's open her. Where are my little scissors? There they are. Boop, boop, boop. Maybe I should have actually opened this thing first. That would have been maybe the smarter choice. Alrighty, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. She is really well packaged, which I am very happy about. Now this is a variegated plant, so I really hope, ooh, oh, I really hope the variegation is nice. A little peek inside. I'm pretty sure you will instantly recognize this plant. Oh my God, I'm so, I'm so excited for her. She's starting to poke out. Oh, there is more packaging, okay. <laughs> this, damn, this is really, really well packed. Also, it is quite cold over here, so shipping plants during this weather isn't the smartest idea, but, oh, I took the risk. Oh my God, look at her. She is such a cutie. So this is a Epipremnum Penatum Marble. I wanted one of these for such a long time. It has some really nice variegation. Oh my God, she's beautiful. I do see that she has one reverted vine, which that's fine. I'll probably just remove that one and keep the variegated sections because that's what I'm really, really curious about. I do have a variegated um, Albo Pinatum Epipremnum, but this one is the marble, so it has kind of more like the marbly, just like a marble queen, basically. And like I said, this is an Epipremnum, so I am not worried about instantly repotting it. We all know Epipremnums are very hardy. They are very robust, so I'm not worried that anything will happen to this plant. And even if something does go wrong, um, this is a plant that's so, so easy to propagate. So I can just take some cuttings in case something does go horribly, horribly wrong, but I literally, I don't see what could go wrong since it is an epipremnum. So let me grab my little repotting mat and let's start with the repot. First things first, I'm gonna take her out of the substrate. Okay, the substrate is really dry, which is actually really great. And she has some very healthy roots. So again, I am so not worried about that. I'm actually gonna lower you guys a little bit so you can properly see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna try to separate it, see which sections are variegated, see which aren't, and go from there. Ooh, okay. So this root ball is obviously just pure peat or cocoa or whatever the hell this is. 
And as you all know, I do not like that substrate. I always bang on about how the substrates used in greenhouses are completely not suitable for our home environments because they are too dense. And you know, in a greenhouse, obviously they have optimal conditions. They have optimal lighting, humidity, airflow, and obviously the soil in that case doesn't matter too much. I mean, it doesn't matter. I don't wanna say that it doesn't matter at all, but it doesn't matter as much as it does in our home environments where we don't have the ideal conditions. So I try to repot most of the plants that I get from nurseries and just give them a better soil situation. And also this is a great opportunity to just check the plant out, check for pests. Again, usually I would wait like a little bit before doing this process, but since this is an epipremnum and since it does have quite a few roots and quite a few plants in it, I'm not worried. So here we have one little plantling. And I definitely think I will be keeping this one because this one has freaking a lovely variegation. Also, I just love growing puffuses or epipremnums on moss poles. They are so gorgeous when they're climbing and they grow up and mature. It's just amazing. And the epipremnum pinnatum specifically has really, really cool uh, mature form because it kind of it splits it has a lot of it gets a lot of fenestrations and it just looks freaking amazing I love this plant I think this is my I think I only have two like pure epipremnum pinnatums the elbow in this one I believe oh no I do have the Cebu blue that one is also an epipremnum pinnatum I think they're like regular puffos like the golden puffos or the marble queen puffos I don't know what their Latin name is. I think those are not Epipremnum pinnatum, or are they? I don't know, I'm not sure. I, I think the Epipremnum pinnatums are the ones that have the actual like long uh, leaves with the fenestrations. So we have two more sections. This one's actually pretty long, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna be putting her on a moss pole, plus I do see some damage on her leaves. And this one has like, she has all right variegation, but I would prefer using leaves like this, which are like completely, completely variegated. We will see, I will, I will assess the situation and then we will make a decision later on. And I think I will plant maybe just two plants together because once they grow up and they mature, um, they will fill out the pole nicely and I feel like the less plants you have in a pot the less they have to fight for nutrients. I feel like for trailing plants it's a lot better to have more plants inside the pot because then it obviously looks nice and bushy but for climbing plants I definitely prefer having less because it just in my opinion looks better. Okay so this plant over here is completely reverted so I know that I will not be using that one. This one is this one is all right but kind of small. I think I'm gonna go for these two honestly. I think I'm gonna go for these two because they have both nice variegation. I don't think I will use this one. This one I might pot up as a little trailing plant. I think that could be cute. I mean, I guess I could actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna chop these upper leaves because I don't like the way they look. They're kind of, um, kind of mangled, but this leaf is really gorgeous. This leaf is really gorgeous. So I might, I mean, do that right away. I'm just gonna use my little scissors, chop, get rid of this area. Yeah, now I don't know, should I use these two then? Or should I stick with my original? Or should I maybe, maybe I'll put these three on a moss pole. Mm, this one I also don't wanna use because it's not highly variegated and it's just kind of also looking a little bit mangled. So I think I will be using these three. And as you can see, they have a really good root system, so once again, not worried at all. Okay, so I'm gonna clean up this soil and then we're gonna assemble our moss pole, pot it up and have a lovely gorgeous new plant. I am so excited, I can't wait, this will be fabulous. First things we need to do is assemble a moss pole and I'm gonna be using these closed uh, back moss poles. These are my favorite. 
I love using them. They're super sturdy. They hold in moisture pretty well. I'm just gonna go ahead and peel the little plastic coating. This is gonna be loud. Oh, so satisfying. I love peeling these things. It's one of the most satisfying things in the world. Oof, so good. So freaking good. Oh, missed a little spot. Just gonna throw that over there. There we go. And now we're gonna assemble our moss poles. I actually wanna see which pot I wanna use. I have two options. Also love a transparent nursery pot. I have the 12 centimeter option, which is this one. And then I have the 15, which might seem big. This might seem a little big, but considering I'm gonna be putting in the moss pole, this seems like a little bit small, right? I think I'm gonna use the 15. Yeah, let's just go for the 15. This is a sturdy plant, so I'm not worried about it. I'm just checking to which point I can put the moss so I can put the moss around here. And I am using a moss pole mixture, which has moss, cocoa coir, I think there's some cocoa chips in here, and maybe tree fern. Oof, there is a lot of fungus gnats in here. Jesus Christ. It is fungus gnat season. They are seriously everywhere and they are so freaking annoying. But it is what it is, you know? Fungus gnats and pests in general just come with owning houseplants. So it's just something uh, I am used to as long as they're not flying in my face. I don't care, like fungus gnats aren't gonna, aren't gonna harm your plant. So as long as they're not harming my plants, I don't care. So I put a, a good amount of moss inside the pole and now I'm gonna go ahead and close it. I think I could actually use just a little bit more. There we go. There we go. And I'm gonna close it. Oh, actually, what I should have done first, this was a stupid mistake. I should have first folded these little flaps. You always wanna fold the flaps first. I totally forgot about that step. Whoopsie poopsie. That's fine, we can do it now. It's gonna just be a little harder, but we can do it. There we go. It has like little flaps that you can fold over just so it's easier to actually assemble. And you should do that step first, but I completely forgot because I just got so excited. And there we go. Now I'm just gonna do the other side as well. I'm just gonna flip it over. Ooh, also, whenever, whenever I make moss poles, it's such a freaking mess. I love moss poles. I think they are one of the best things you can do for your plants, but good God, <laughs> do they make a freaking mess. Whenever I have to assemble a moss pole, it is, oh, it's such a mess, but it is a fun task. It's just a messy one. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and clip it back here. And usually I use like somewhere, like you can adjust, it has like four little, four little slits that you can put it in and adjust the, the size of the pole, and usually I aim for kind of the middle size. Also, these can be a little bit finicky to close. So just be careful and watch for your little phalanges because you don't want to get your fingers caught and potentially hurt, but we are doing pretty good. Oh God, come on, come on you little, a little piece of turd. There we go. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. The moss pole is assembled and she is looking absolutely stunning. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Do, 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 do. And now I'm also gonna take my moss pole or my, uh, my substrate, my soil mixture. This is just a Monstera and Philodendron mixed from Soil Ninja. Now, of course, I know what you're gonna say. Well, this is not a Monstera nor a Philodendron, and it ain't, but I think it'll be fine in this mixture. Like, I keep the majority of my houseplants in this mixture, and they don't seem to complain because it's a really great mix. It's really chunky. It just works for me, and honestly, if you find something that works for you, just stick with it. Just freaking stick with it. Okay, so I'm gonna put the moss pole inside and flip it over real quickly. 
make a mess, of course, of freaking course. And then I'm just gonna fill it a little bit just so I can stabilize the moss pole. Alrighty, here we go. There we go. Now the moss pole is just a little bit more stable. And now that I'm looking at it, I actually see some gaps down here in the moss. So I'm gonna try to fill that through this little hole. I don't know if I'll be successful, but even if I don't, it's fine. Like the plant will start climbing and then attaching to the moss pole. So yeah, alrighty. There we go. Now I'm just gonna put my my little plant in some kind of order. So I think I will put, there we go, so you can see, I think I'll put this guy. Also, this will look crazy in the beginning. Whenever you repot a plant, it always looks freaking crazy before it starts looking better. Also, I should have gotten some Velcro. You wanna find the aerial root, that's really important. And you wanna press those aerial roots against the moss pole. That way you will have the most success of it actually attaching to the moss pole. So again, aerial roots are here and I'm gonna put that side against the moss pole. Okay, so I'm just gonna hold it in place and backfill it. Really, really simple stuff. There we go, beautiful. Freaking beautiful. Just gonna fill the back of the pot as well. Burr, 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 burr. Obviously, whenever you repot a plant or put it in a moss pole, like I said, it does look crazy for a little bit. I lost my train of thought because another package arrived, some substrate, funny enough. So I don't know what I was saying exactly, but basically it will just take some time for this plant to adjust, get used to its new growing environment and start actually growing. Once she settles in, I am pretty sure this will be a very nice and prolific grower. But yeah, right now she just looks a little bit crazy, but I'm so, so excited and happy to have this plant in my collection. It's gonna be a gorgeous one and I can't wait to see her size up. Alrighty, there we go. We're done unboxing, repotting, putting it on a moss pole. This was a very, very fun little project. And again, this is what she is looking like. I will definitely keep you up to date and report on her growth. And I am very excited to actually see her grow and update you. But until then, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have this plant and how you care for it. And if you have any tips and tricks on sizing it up and getting those beautiful variegated leaves, I would really love to know. Until next time, have an amazing day. Goodbye.